Hi, I'm Miss Dowling from the Flores Elementary School Library. Today I have a wonderful read aloud with beautiful illustrations by Lynn Cherry called The Great Kapok Tree. Uh, and before I read the story, I want to tell you that Lynn Cherry actually traveled to the Amazon rainforest in Brazil so that she could do the most realistic illustrations for this book. Um, and she visited with monkeys and other animals and that's where she got the idea for the story. Um, It says at the beginning of the book, in the Amazon rainforest, it is always hot. And in that heat, everything grows and grows and grows. The tops of the trees in the rainforest are called the canopy. The canopy is a sunny place that touches the sky. The animals that live there like lots of light. Colorful parrots fly from tree to tree. Monkeys leap from branch to branch. The bottom of the rainforest is called the understory. The animals that live in the understory like darkness. There, silent snakes curl around hanging vines. Graceful jaguars watch and wait. And in this steamy environment, the great kapok tree shoots up through the forest and emerges above the canopy. This is the story of a community of animals that live in one such tree in the rainforest. And now we begin our story. Two men walked into the rainforest. Moments before the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now all was quiet. Quiet as the creatures walked, watched the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great kapok tree. Then he left. The smaller man took the axe he carried and struck the trunk of the tree. Whack! Whack! The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. The wood of the tree was very hard. Chop! 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 The man wiped off the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Whack! Chop! Whack! Chop! Soon the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great kapok tree. Before he knew it, the heat and hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. A boa constrictor lived in the kapok tree. He slithered down in its trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash the ax had caused. Then the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear. Senor, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Senor, my hive is in this kapok tree, and I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower collecting pollen. In this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the kapok tree. They chattered to the sleeping man. Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die, and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When the heavy rains come, the soil will be washed away, and the forest will become a desert. A toucan, a macaw, and a cock of the rock flew down from the canopy. Senor, squawked the toucan, you must not cut down this tree. 
We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on the land. They set fires to clear the underbrush, and soon the forest disappears. Where once there was life and beauty, only black and smoldering ruins remain. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of the leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped in the man's ear. Senor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives, many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great K-pop tree. A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree. Because his spotted coat blended into the dimpled light and shadows of the understory, no one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor, the kapok tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? Four tree porcupines swung down from the branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what we animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen. And Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forest, you will destroy that which gives us all life. Several anteaters climbed down the kapok tree with their young clinging to their backs. The unstriped anteater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought for the future, and surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends upon what you do today. The big man tells you to chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. A three-toed sloth had begun climbing down from the canopy when the men first appeared. Only now did she reach the ground, plodding ever so slowly over to the sleeping man. She spoke in her deep and lazy voice. Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? A child from the Yanomamo tribe who lived in the rainforest knelt over the sleeping man. He murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us all with new eyes. The man awoke with a start. <gasps> Before him stood the rainforest child and all around him, staring, were the creatures who de depended on the great kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. The man looked about and saw that the sun was streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great kapok tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor, but he heard no sound, for the creatures were strangely silent. The man stood and picked up his axe. He swung back his arm as though to strike the tree. Suddenly, he stopped 
He turned and looked at the animals and the child. He hesitated. Then he dropped the axe and walked out of the rainforest. And that's the end of our book. This book has a really strong theme in it, which means that the author wrote it to teach us a lesson or to hopefully that we could gather some um, new view of the world from it. And I think a lot of people say, oh, the theme is don't cut down trees. But I think the theme was actually written by the author uh, on this page when the anteater says, surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends on what you do today. And that could be the environment, that could be what you do with your friendships, what you do with your studying, but that whatever happens tomorrow depends on what you do today. Uh, so thank you for tuning in to this story with me and I'll see you again next time. Bye.